Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And uh, it's been a very long time since I haven't been doing a, a bit another dead meat um, reaction. So today I'm doing a reaction to um, Benny Loves You Kill Count 2019. And um, yo, yeah, join the video. Welcome to the Kill Count. By the way, I saw this movie like today. I'm doing this kill count right today. Like, I just saw this movie like just an hour ago. It was a pretty good film. I just saw this film today. It was pretty good. I loved. I liked it. It was pretty cute. Out where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. Okay. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Benny Loves You, a British American film that premiered at film festivals back in 2019. Benny Loves You belongs to the killer toy subgenre, which includes the Child's Play series and a whole lot of full moon features. Like many of those movies, Benny Loves You is a horror comedy, with a lot of its humor coming from the absurdity of the titular killer toy. This movie is about as indie as it gets, created entirely by one man named Carl Holt. Carl Holt! Holt wrote it, directed it, produced it, stars in it, helped do the cinematography, and even edited the goddamn thing. Oh wait, he also composed the score, did the impressive visual effects, and voiced Benny. Taking on so many roles in a production is usually ill-advised, but Holt had always wanted to make a movie and said he had a midlife crisis when he turned 40 and still hadn't gotten around to doing it. There was a case of, if I'm ever gonna do it, now I'm gonna do it. And so Holt spent the next five years making Benny Loves You, using mostly friends and family, family as crew. Though he had used an Elmo doll a decade prior in his short film Eddie Loves You, for his feature he designed an original character named Benny. I am continuously impressed by how good Benny looks in the movie. It's hard to tell- Okay, this is just good. This is just- pretty good. Well, that it's not a real puppet. These are the kinds of visual effects most low-budget horror films would kill to have. And I love Benny's cute design, so I'm thrilled the distribution company sent me a Benny in the mail along with a copy of the film. I had never heard of this movie before they sent it to me, but I was so taken by the effects and- The movie was just so good. Like, literally, there's a lot of graphic detail. I can be surprised. I'd say the most graphicest would be that torture scene with a bunch of those workers they walk inside and kills, I decided to cover it on the show. I also found Holt surprisingly effective as an actor and a director. He gives his scenes a fun style and suspense that work as a loving tribute to the horror genre without ever veering into obnoxious Texas Chainsaw Massacre just on-the-nose references. That said, the writing and humor left me unable to love the movie. The story is a mess, with a lot of montages serving as patchwork, the leading lady love interest is bereft of autonomy, and the weird sense of humor often doesn't land for me, especially when it focuses on child abuse and killing animals. It's dark humor that feels more mean than funny sometimes. While you watch this kill count though, I need you to keep in mind that making a movie is hard. It's difficult no matter what movie it is, and no matter what budget you have. For one dude to do everything Holt did with practically zero money is nothing short of incredible. I'm gonna be making criticisms and jokes because that's what I do, and because as a movie, that's what it deserves. Good faith engagement. But no matter how much of Benny Loves You doesn't work for me, Carl Holt did the thing. He made a movie. That's more than I can say. All I've done so far is make a pretty solid YouTube series and land some kick-ass sponsors. Oh hey, speaking of which, I never thought I'd fall in love with bars of soap, but then came Dr. Squatch. They have so many great smelling soaps that they've truly enhanced my shower time. Oh, hey, hon, get my back? Thanks. Squatch is getting spooky this month, too, with some special Halloween soaps. They call them Bricks of the Dead, and they're made with simple, natural ingredients, just like all their other scents. You can see on the back of the box. Ooh, shea butter and ground vanilla vine? Don't mind if I do. Dr. Squatch's soaps smell so good that Chelsea can't help but use them either, meaning we both get to walk around just kind of sniffing on each other. It's pretty nice. <laughs> and what I throw on their all-natural deodorant, too? Oh boy, it makes me an aromatic delight. Right now, new customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more. Just use my code D- Sorry, not interested. <laughs> SC Dead Meat and click the link in the description below. I loved my stuffed animals as a kid, but I don't think any of them ever killed for me. Benny, though? Huh, just let me show you how much killing he does. Okay, this is pretty much like the movie begins with a screaming brat. Okay! Wow. 
Hey, God! This night. I did see this scene, but I accidentally, like, I accidentally clicked off the movie two times. Like, I accidentally stopped the movie, so I had to go back and rewind it to scenes I've already seen that film. So, uh, yeah, it was still a pretty fun film. I can't lie. We had Arby's. Nightmare child Ashley doesn't want her smelly old bear Todd anymore, and for that infraction, she must pay. This cold open is great, with the colored lights and dry ice smoke coming out of the toy box. In fact, these first five minutes would work real well as a short film on their own. Todd comes back from the trash to torment Ashley, all while repeating his catchphrase. You're special. Cheerily chanting special, Todd drags Ashley into her closet. And this movie has the guts to do what most movies don't. It kills a kid that not only kills her, but takes out her freak. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have seen the scene. Like, dude, that is bloody and gory. Freaking eyes. Hot damn. Didn't see that one coming. You're special. Our proper story begins with voiceover narration from Jack. He works at a toy company where no one likes his ideas, even though this disco robot is pretty cool. Except that it was somehow accidentally named AIDS. AIDS! Yeah, not all the humor works in this movie. Although I do like George Holly <laughs> as Jack's smarmy co-worker so Richard. Weird. It's, uh, it's Wishard, actually. Huge JP from Grandma's Boy energy. Jack has a date with Tara, whom he calls stunningly bland, a bowl of charge coming from a dude whose bedroom decor is still stuck in Adam. Adolescence. The sight of it damn near turns Tara into a final girl. Jack's turning 35 today, but still lives with his parents in their giant kick-ass home in the middle of nowhere. I can't blame him too much, though. His parents look awesome. I'd love to hang out with them. Wait, Dad, watch out! Oh, what? No, I love oh, that dad! God. Shit. Well, at least we- Hey, Mom, wait, watch out! Oh my I God! Yo, Jack! Your awesome parents just got killed, dude! Ten months later, Jack lives by his lonesome and is having trouble keeping up with the house's maintenance and mortgage. He tries working late to earn a promotion, which only earns him derision from Richard. That guy's riding high thanks to Roscoe, his impressive robot that earned Richard Design of the Year. Jack sees his boss Ron about the promotion, but since his toy designs are more juvenile than his bedroom decorations, Ron tells him he's fired instead. It's just business. Sorry. When Jack asks for mercy, Ron rehires him at a lower wage, and for that, he forces Jack to be grateful. I just gave you a job. Give me a smile. Jack decides he'll try being an adult human. He puts on an adult human costume and accepts that he can't keep living in this huge house all by himself. To make it more appealing to buyers, he cleans up his bedroom and packs away most of his toys, some of which were really Carl Holtz from his childhood. There's only one bright red bear that manages to give Jack pause. And he loves you. Aw, oh, it's Benny. And he loves you. Hell yeah. A flashback shows that when Jack was but a lad, he had a pretty big monster problem. The thing was on a first name... Okay, that is just creepy. I have done sings a song of this thing before. Like, when I saw this movie, I was like, wow, this is the best movie I've ever seen. This is pretty, like, this is just so good. There's only, like, four items. I think you should definitely watch it. Basis with him. <laughs> Jack's mom, dressed up looking like a disco ball, gave him Benny as a protector, making Benny kind of like Rex, only he occasionally makes a questionable moan. Oh, no. The first time I heard that was from the Benny they sent me in the mail, and uh, I was not expecting it. Oh, no. oh, oh, Benny, calm down, buddy. Although Jack doesn't mind Benny's exclamations of ecstasy, he is trying to be more adult, so into the rubbish bin, Benny the Bear goes. And yeah, they say that thing's a bear, even though it's a dog if I've ever seen one. Put it behind a piano and it's fucking... Okay. <laughs> I don't... I don't really know what to It looks like a rabbit to me. It just looks like a red rabbit. That's what it looks like to me. It definitely looks like a rabbit. It de it just definitely looks like a rabbit. Just, you know, the ears and... Yeah. Have you ever seen a bunny? Yeah. Yeah, you've seen a bunny before. This, this to this. Look, the eyes of the thing, it doesn't look similar. It looks like this. Rabbit animal with ears down and red skin. There's obviously got to be something that looks like that. Okay, so like, 
Okay, so like something similar to this is it looks like this. It looks like this. This is what it. This is what it looks like. That's what I think it looks like. This and that bunny. And Ralph. That night, as a storm rages on outside, a smoke and light show portends the arrival of a killer plushie. Benny cuts the lights out and leads Jack to a display of death. He's murdered all of Jack's other stuffed animals. Even though Benny's the only survivor, and he's shot like a horror movie killer, Jack doesn't know he's responsible yet. He calls the police during an homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, oh God. Sorry. The cops who come over are a good cop and a bad cop, but they don't do much other than insult Jack for being a loner and eat his biscuits that he doesn't keep in a box or anything? What the fuck? Now, before we leave Act 1, we're gonna need to introduce a love interest. So, here she is. Her name is Dawn, and she just got hired as a- By the way, I'm doing this because, uh, yeah, you know, Roblox is just down and, uh, I'll officially be doing these videos, uh, tech consultant. Though Claire Cartwright plays her well, Dawn is one of the most perfunctory romantic interests I've seen in quite a while. There is no reason for her to be into this guy, but she's thirsty for him after their first conversation. You provide the toys, I provide the back end. Jack racks his brain for ideas to impress Ron and keep his job, but by the time the weekend comes, he's still got nothing but piss. Well, Jack, two heads are better than one, so it's a good thing you've got a Saturday study buddy in bed right now. It's the head of this dude... David, who helped convince Jack to sell his house earlier. Then he bounces in, eager to show off his work to Papa. <laughs> Yep, Benny loves Jack, I guess, even though we watched him throw the doll out, and the tagline of the movie is, don't throw him out. I thought Benny would be pissed, but instead, he loves Jack. He even writes it on the wall in blood. The blood from David's headless body and viscera, which is littered all over the kitchen. This is brutal, Benny! Jack ditches the finger food and cleans up the mess in a montage, while Benny bounces around, intestines in hand. I love the way Holt animated Benny's movement. It looks like a kid is bouncing him along in pretend walking. The doll's floppy features weren't intentionally designed to emphasize that idea. Very creative motion, instead of just having him walk around like a person, like most films would do. Jack is in utter shock at the killie bear, but Benny's just excited to have Jack interested in him again. Oh, wow. Maybe a little too excited. Like a loyal dog, Benny does everything as a sweet gesture, even when it's grotesque or annoying. Quit spilling all that beer, bear! Because of Benny's insistence that he loves Jack, Benny loves you. Jack agrees to let him stay, as long as there are no more messy murders. That shit takes multiple montages to clean up, and all Benny does is sit there and watch. They take care of David's body, and Jack sits down to work again, as Benny busies himself with knife practice and watching a horror movie. Aw, oh, it's okay, little buddy. It's fun to be scared. That fake horror movie was one of the last things filmed and features Holt's friend, John Bowe, this movie's cinematographer, and basically 50% of its crew. The other half was Carl's mom, Shirley Holt, who's credited as a PA. She can be seen doing all sorts of things on set in the movie's 90-minute fly-on-the-wall making-of documentary included on the Blu-ray. This production was so bare-bones, scenes were often shot with only Holt and Bo, like when they turned Holt's garage into a fake basement. Jack is struck with inspiration and comes up with Scare Bears. A skeptical Ron gives him the go-ahead to proceed, so he starts working on the concept with a whole nother montage. During it, Benny dresses up in costumes like a 90s Halloween McNugget buddy, and Jack grows closer and closer to dawn. We never hear what they're saying that makes them grow closer, because who needs dialogue when you're having a montage? Oh, Benny, what the fuck, bro? Don't kill cats during the montage. Bro, uh, fuck. Fuck cats. Rip the cat. I bet this sassy gorilla guy wouldn't kill cats, Benny. He would just sing schoolyard tunes about bodily fluids. Dawn designed this gorilla when she wasn't too busy lusting over Jack, and she invites herself over to his house that weekend so she can get a taste of that protagonist meat. Ron Prush- That is funny. Just Jack into dog sitting the same night, so puppy Precious there might have to witness some man eating. Since Jack's house is still up for sale, a realtor shows it to that woman Tara from earlier. It's a scene that's edited in a real funky way, where we see what's about to happen to her in quick flashes from the future. I understand that it's done to create jokes by contrast. Nothing to be afraid of here. <laughs> oh! 
<laughs> but it's still weird. I don't like it. The realtor Phil is killed by Benny with a signpost that goes through his back and causes a whole bunch of blood to spray out. That's a lot of volume right there. He's not completely killed until a few minutes later after Benny pours hot tea all over his face. This kill required fake blood that evidently didn't taste good. Oh. It's not very nice. With the end of a post attached to actor David Wayman's chest, they sprayed fake blood all over the place, including onto Tara's actor, Lydia Horahan. Since Holt shot this film at a friend's house free of charge, they had to make sure to keep things as clean as possible and paint over any walls they messed up. You can actually see protective plastic covering the door in this scene, but only if you're looking for it. After getting scalded by Benny, Tara climbs a ladder into the attic. Benny figures out that she's up there, but there's no time to pursue her. Jack is home, and Benny's gotta show off his work again. Ta-da! Jack gets pissed at the Benster, since he has to bury another body in his backyard, so when his date night rolls around, he decides to put Benny in a bin in the basement. Sorry, little guy, but Jack's late for another montage. This one showing him getting ready for his date with Dawn. His dinner of chips and beans leaves a lot to be desired. Benny frees himself through the power of gravity and peruses the murder tool options on display. Ron shows up to drop off Precious, and aw oh, man, you know this movie's gonna kill that dog. Seems to get a kick out of stuff like that. Sure enough, after Benny makes his selection, he kills the poor pug by throwing a hatchet into its back. Don't it Ooh. Well, that's a... That must be a bloody sign. Jack chat by the fire, and she reveals that she too lost a parent on her birthday. When she was young, she had a doll named Amy that her dad thought was dead. The night before her birthday, her dad was found dead at the bottom of the stairs, apparently having tripped over Amy, who subsequently disappeared. I love this tragic backstory as a nod to Gremlins, but note that since we never see or meet Dawn's dad, I'm not gonna put him on the count. Kinda like how I don't put dogs on the count, no matter how much the movie likes to show us their dead bodies. Jesus, movie. The dead dog prop was made by Alistair Wright, who was hired last minute to replace their original effects artist. About two weeks into shooting, he had a nervous breakdown and ran off with all the money. <laughs> Wright and makeup artist Claudette Fruchier did their best to deliver the gore with limited time and budget. A lot of the guts were made of liquid latex and paper towel. Holt says the movie was supposed to be much gorier, but honestly, dude, I think it's plenty bloody as is. Don finds Benny and fawns over how cute he is, and when Benny starts to look stabby, Jack says he doesn't like Don to get him to stop. So I guess Benny kills people who annoy Jack and people who get too close to him? But he doesn't hurt Jack, even though he's thrown him out twice, and the tagline of the movie says not to throw him out. Nope. Okay. Okay, what is he gonna stop with the go for him out? I mean, that is the title. That is the thumbnail of the movie indeed at the top. Do not throw him out. Okay. Dawn still wants to jump Jack's bones, but he's got a dead dog to deal with. Good thing she waits for him in his bedroom alone for what seems like at least a half hour. Jack foils another one of Benny's attempts to kill Dawn, but in the process has to act like he was protecting her from Precious. That leads to him beating the shit out of this dog corpse and tossing it out the window right as Ron arrives to pick the pet up. Okay, good. We can be done with the extended dead dog sequence. At least it gave us a cameo from Carl's mom, Shirley. The incident gets Jack canned from work, so even though Benny wants to celebrate his birthday, he tells the bear to leave him alone and stop ruining his life. Benny doesn't give up so easily, and that night he bugs Jack, acting just like Lucy does sometimes. Play with me. Not now, Lucy, I need to sleep. Benny leads Jack downstairs, where he tadas him a birthday gift. It's Ron. Benny's kidnapped him, since he's somehow able to drive, and now- How can he drive a whole darn car? How was he able to drive a whole dang car? <laughs> Literally all the way to this place to kidnap this little thing. Jack's boss is in his living room wearing a big red bow, looking like a pissed off Kiki. Jack decides to blackmail Ron for a promotion using a picture of him that would definitely get Jack in legal trouble? Some parts of this movie just don't make any fucking sense. Jack starts having fun on his power trip. Now tell me you love being my bitch. I love being your bitch. But Benny doesn't want Jack to have any other playthings, so he murders Ron by throwing a garden tool into his neck. He then procures the ultimate gift, Ron's heart fresh from his chest cavity. Ta da! Sick. Okay, that is just gruesome as heck.
sick of the bloodshed, Jack nails Benny in a coffin and buries him in the woods. There, there, Jack. You can try to cheer up with this teary mini-montage. It's not quite full length, but don't worry, montage maniacs. There will be more. There will be more. Don shows up at Jack's house and helps him clean up dog guts because, wait, what's that rustling in the woods? It can't be. By God, it is! Another montage! This one features loud electronic music that was, you guessed it, composed by Carl Holt. This man's moxie is impressive. During this montage, Jack and Don have a bloody good time cleaning up, while Benny has a dark night of the soul walking home by himself in the rain. I really can't believe how many montages this thing has. Oh, hey, Tara. Okay, this scene was just sad as it. I did not care about that. Like, maybe this was supposed to be a sad scene? How you doing? Still in the attic? That's cool. If that attic looks weird to you, it's because it's not real. I didn't notice it when I watched the movie, but this entire setting is CG. Benny Loves You was filmed back in 2014 and 15, before Holt spent four years doing all the editing, visual effects work, and sound design. He did it all on his home computer, animating segments and then letting them render for days. Sometimes he'd leave his PC rendering over a weekend, only to see that a small mistake was made. Then he'd have to start all over again. Benny acquires a burger mask and tries putting up warnings that he's going to kill Dawn, but she doesn't notice him, not even when he's hitching a ride on her car to the office. Holt says that there are only two or three shots in the movie that used a real Benny puppet. The rest is CG. I'm pretty sure one of the practical shots they used is- Okay, that's just funny when he runs over the flowers. Like, he can't even drive a whole thing yet. His legs are too small to touch the ground. Is this hilarious one of Benny on a lawnmower. Jack finds out that Benny's planning to murder his girlfriend, so he runs to the office where they laugh at him for saying Benny's a dangerous bear. The toy proves his master correct by stabbing Richard in the hand. Jack saves Dawn from Benny as Richard saves his hand from that knife. The three of them escape and lock the lounge door behind them, condemning these ten co-workers to certain death. They're murdered by Benny in another sort of montage, but this one doesn't have a needle drop. It's more focused on the slaughter. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of fun. And bloody. Was that the guy? Was that the guy? Was that the guy's pee? Damn, that bear is savage. In the end, Benny doesn't leave any of the ten co-workers alive. Jack, Dawn, and Richard retreat to Jack's house and try to figure out a plan. Richard's not optimistic. This is your terminal, man! Your terminal! If you didn't catch it, that's the game over line from Aliens. Game over, man! It's game over! Richard says it in French. This is your terminal, man! Your terminal! Because he's been saying French shit the whole movie. This follows an earlier reference to Sigourney Weaver's famous line. Oh yeah, Aliens 1986, I think, part two. Is that from, like, 1986? Yeah, the 1986 version. I've seen that one. That one's pretty cool. I've seen this one before. Pretty much likely, not for pretty much likely, unlike This is pretty much likely. Okay, well, anyways. I'm from the same film. Get away from her, you bitch! Get away from her, you bitch! Jack also. Okay, they just copy random lines from the Alien Free films. Not Alien Free. They just copy random lines from the 1986 film Alien. They just copy lines from that. Quotes Terminator in this scene. He can't be bargained with. He doesn't feel pity or remorse. It can't be bargained with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse. Together, they come to the inevitable conclusion. I didn't, I didn't know they copied the, some of the... Alien 2 lines until now. Like, literally. Only way they'll stop Benny is with a montage! <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? This. Okay, how many montages are there? thing is officially more montage than movie. I mean, the second they're gearing up montage ends, Benny gets one of his own by making weapons out of things he steals from the mall. <laughs> Once again, though, gotta respect the subtle-ish horror reference here, as Benny evokes Freddy from the OG Nightmare. Benny gains entry to Jack's house through the water. 
Okay, they're just copying random scenes from the live films. Okay, Nightmare on Elm Street. I've only seen two films. Part one and part three. Part two. I had to skip that one because it was too bad. He's popping his little head out of the shitter. <laughs> Penny, you nasty. At the same time, Dawn finds a gift made out to her from Penny. It's her daddy killing doll from childhood, Amy. And now Amy wants to bring a sunset to Dawn. The Amy toy was one of the lowest tech efforts of the film. It was simply a doll they moved around with a hand off screen. All the robots, on the other hand, were completely CG. And of course, all designed and rendered by Holt. He motion captured his own movements using two Xbox Connects, which he used because they were able to capture depth. The more you know. Jack finds Benny, who backflips out of the way of a fire attack. Jack sticks his new toy on Benny, a robot, giving us not a a montage, but an all-out toy fight! <laughs> Great animation and direction to this battle between two things that don't actually exist. This is clearly the part of filmmaking that Carl Holt most excels at. Dude would kill it as a dedicated visual effects artist. Benny finishes the fight with a frying pan and a side. Oh man, I hit with a frying pan securing himself a victory. Richard is still around, and he's got his own opponent, Roscoe, his award-winning robot. Richard rejected him in an earlier scene, saying the toy was old news. Roscoe is so last year. Roscoe gets his revenge when he kills Richard in a nasty way, slicing open his abdomen and using a vacuum to suck out his insides. Holy shit, y'all, Roscoe came to play! Jack and Dawn go back and forth in their respective toy fights, until, for whatever reason, Benny and Roscoe start fighting each other. It's another well-choreographed scene between two toys fighting, and eventually Roscoe gets defeated thanks to some interference from Jack. The robot wheels away, and Benny stops attacking Jack. Dawn gets the best of Amy and stabs her former doll to pieces, but Benny comes in while she's distracted and manages to get her at knife point. Jack says he's sorry to Benny for taking him for granted and treating him poorly, and the apology is enough to get Benny to drop the knife. The toy embraces its master with a big old Benny hug, and with a kiss on the nose and one last little memory montage, Jack prepares to do what needs to be done. Before he can stab Benny though, Dawn uh, saves the toy? What the fuck? Why would she even do that? Then Benny grabs the knife and jumps over Dawn, crashing through the window and landing in front of those two cops. They use a couple of airsoft guns to shoot Benny down in a dramatic depiction that's funny thanks to the intense sound design. Okay, couldn't they just use like real guns? <laughs> Why are they using just random guns that are like used in orange? They're not even like real police guns. I will show you a real police gun. That, this is what a police gun looks like. In the end, the injury in that in that is not the weapon they use. Again, the injured Benny lands next to a distraught Jack, and the two of them fade out into a picture being packed by Jack two months later. He's finally leaving his house to move in together with Dawn, and the police agree to cover for him, since it'd be weird to explain the whole Benny thing. The movie ends with a shot of Roscoe and Todd, just in case they want to make a sequel. You're special. Oh, wait, almost forgot about the post credit scene. It shows Tara still stuck in the attic, having finally succumbed to hunger and skeletonitis, the bastard disease. How many bodies did Benny any hypocritically throw away. Okay, I did not see that scene where she decayed in that place of the attic. I didn't know that scene was there actually. I never saw that scene, um, the ending scene for me. I didn't see that. I, I trust me, I did not see that. Okay, let's grab him and find out by getting to the numbers. Uh, where did he go? Oh, oh God! Oh, God! Oh, my goodness. Damn it, Benny! We already did that bit with Chucky! By my count, 18 people died in Benny Loves You. There were 10 male victims and 8 female victims, a nearly even pie chart because stuffed animals are for everyone. With a runtime of 94 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 5.22 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Rashar. The smarmy secondary antagonist needs to have a solid death, and he did. This thing.
does not suck on so many levels. Only one. Dol Machete for Lamus Kill will go to Tara, who was forgotten in the attic until she became a bastard skelly. And that's it! Benny Loves You first premiered in 2019 and had a wider release this year in 2021. Though it has plenty of issues, I'm proud of Carl Holt for achieving his childhood dream. Until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. On the next Kill Count. The time has come for Jason Voorhees to go where no horror franchise has gone before. Unless you count Critters, Leprechaun, Hellraiser, and the Alien series, just ignore those and enjoy Jason in space! Jason X is a ridiculous low-budget romp that hurls Rip Van Voorhees 450 years into the future, where machetes look cooler, CGI looks shittier, and horny teens still love to get rowdy in space! Plus, there's Sergeant Brodsky. Yes, hi again. But he's a badass. In Spain! Okay, guys, so um, that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.